Nikar Mutta Arabic, Romanized, Nikar al Mutar, literally, pleasure marriage, or Sire Persian, is a private and verbal temporary marriage contract that is practiced in Twelver Shia Islam in which the duration of the marriage and the ma must be specified and agreed upon in advance. It is a private contract made in a verbal or written format. A declaration of the intent to marry and an acceptance of the terms are required as in other forms of marriage in Islam. According to Twelver Shia jurisprudence, preconditions for mutar are the bride must not be married, she must be Muslim or belong to Ahl al Kitab, people of the book, she should be chaste, not addicted to fornication, and she should not be a young virgin if her father is absent and cannot give consent. At the end of the contract, the marriage ends and the wife must undergo idda, a period of abstinence from marriage and thus, sexual intercourse. The idda is intended to give paternal certainty to any child, ren should the wife become pregnant during the temporary marriage contract. Generally, the nikah mutta has no prescribed minimum or maximum duration. However, one source, the Oxford Dictionary of Islam, indicates the minimum duration of the marriage is debatable and durations of at least three days, three months or one year have been suggested. Sunni Muslims do no practice nikah muta however, they do practice nikah masyah, which has been regularly considered a similar marriage arrangement. Many Muslims and Western scholars have claimed that both nikah muta and nikah masyah are Islamically void attempts to religiously sanction prostitution which is otherwise forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> Background Muta, literally meaning joy, is a condition where rules of Islam are relaxed. It can apply to marriage the nikah muta or to the hajj the obligatory pilgrimage the muta of hajj Muta is a sensitive area of disagreement between those who follow Sunni Islam for whom nikah muta is forbidden and those who follow Shia Islam for whom nikah muta is allowed Shias and Sunnis do agree that initially or near the beginning of Islam nikah muta was a legal contract Beyond that time the legality of the practice is debated Historical examples A historical example of nikah muta is described by Ibn Haha Asqalani in his commentary on the work of Sahih al-Bukhari. Muawiyah I first caliph of the Umayyad dynasty, entered into a nikah muta contract with a woman from Tarif. She was a slave who was owned by a man called Banu Hazami. She received a yearly stipend from Muawiyah. Ordinarily, sexual access rights to a female slave belongs to the slave owner as part of his property rights which cannot be shared or assigned, unless the slave is married off, in which case the slave owner loses all rights to sexual access. Scholar Abd Yor Razak as Sanani described how Sayyid bin Jubayah frequently visited a woman in Mecca. When asked why, he said he had a contract of nikah muta with her and seeing her was more halal than drinking water. Ibn Jurij, an eminent scholar from among the Tabi al Tabi'in, was known to have practiced muta with a large number of women. By contrast, in the Sahih al Bukhari, muta marriage is classed as forbidden because Ali bin Abu Talib said that he heard Muhammad say that it is forbidden. As narrated by Ali bin Abu Talib, on the day of Kaibar, Allah's apostle forbade the muta i.e. temporary marriage and the eating of donkey meat. As mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 9 book 86, number 91. Zaidi Shia texts also state that Ali said muta marriage was forbidden and for this reason the Zaidi Shia do not practice muta marriage. Topic: In Sunni Islam In the 16th century, during the reign of Akbar, the third emperor of the Mughal Empire, who was believed to be a Hanafi Sunni, debates on religious matters were held weekly on Thursdays. When discussing Nikah Mutta, Shiite theologians argued that the historic Sunni scholar Malik ibn Anas supported the practice. However, the evidence from Malik's Mawatta Manual of Religious Jurisprudence was not forthcoming. The Shiite theologians persisted and Nikah Mutta was legalized for the Twelve Shia during Akbar's reign. According to the actual book Muwatta by Malik ibn Anas, Mutar was banned because Ali ibn Abi Talib said that Mutar was banned by Muhammad himself on the day of Khaibar. 
For this reason the Zaydi Shia do not practice mutar marriage. According to Malik ibn Anas in Muwatta Vol. 1, Chapter 18, Hadith 1151-43. Both Abdullah and al-Hassan, the two sons of Muhammad ben Ali Abu Talib, from their father Muhammad ben Ali ben Abu Talib from Ali ben Abu Talib, that the Messenger of Allah had forbidden temporary marriage, and the eating of the flesh of the domestic donkey on the day of Khaibar. The Hanafi school of Sunni jurisprudence argues that although the nikah mutta contract itself is valid, marriage is regarded as a permanent condition and therefore, the temporary element of the contract makes it void. The only Sunni Arab jurisdiction that mentions nikah mutta is Jordan. If the nikah mutta meets all other requirements, it is treated as if it were a permanent marriage. The 13th century scholar, Faq al Din al Razi, said, Amongst the Ummah there are many great scholars who deem mutta to have been abrogated, whilst others say that mutta still remains. The 20th century Sunni scholar, Wahid Uzed Zayman, Diobandi said, on the topic of mutta, differences have arisen amongst the Sahaba, and the Alul Hadith, and they deemed mutta to be permissible, since mutta under the Sharia was practiced and this is proven, and as evidence of permissibility they cite verse 24 of Surah Nisa as proof. The practice of mutta is definite and there is IJMA consensus on this and you cannot refute definite proof by using logic. The Garab al-Quran, the dictionary of Quranic terms states, the people of faith are in agreement that mutta is halal, then a great man said mutta was abrogated, other than them remaining scholars, including the Shia believe mutta remain halal in the same way it was in the past. Ibn Abbas held this viewpoint and Imran bin Hussain, the Tafsir Haqqani, a critical explanation of the Quran states, some Sunni scholars deem mutta permissible, in the same way the Sahaba Ibn Abbas and Imran bin Hussain deemed it permissible. Ibn Abbas was rebuked by Ali himself on mutta marriage itself. In Sahih Muslim it is mentioned that Ali heard that Ibn Abbas gave some relaxation in connection with the contracting of temporary marriage. Ali replied don't be hasty in your religious verdict, Ibn Abbas, for Allah's messenger may peace be upon him on the day of Khaibar prohibited forever the doing of it and eating of the flesh of domestic Sunni Muslims use this hadith from Sahih Muslim as further evidence that even great companions like Ibn Abbas got it wrong and Ali had to correct him. And this correction by Ali they say ends the whole subject matter on the complete banning of mutta marriage. De facto temporary marriages were conducted by Sunnis by not specifying how long the marriage would last in the written documents themselves while orally agreeing to set a fixed period. Nikah <inaudible> Masyar <inaudible> 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 Even though nikah mutta is prohibited by Sunni schools of law, several types of innovative marriage exist, including masyar ambulant and urfi customary marriage. Some regard masyar as being comparable to nikah mutta, for the sole purpose of "...sexual gratification in illicit manner". Sunnis dismiss these claims as nothing more than Shia polemics. Nikah masyar, they argue, unlike mutta is not temporary but a permanent marriage with no time limits. The difference between a normal marriage and masyar marriage is that in masyar the man and woman forego certain rights temporarily until both partners choose to reinstate them. But masyar is still frowned upon in Sunni Islam and never recommended. In Barathist Iraq, Uday Hussain's daily newspaper Babel, which at one point referred to the Shiites as Rafida, a sectarian epithet for Shia regularly used by ultra-conservative Salafi Muslims, attacked Warabi clerics as hypocrites for endorsing Masyar while denouncing Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Nikah Shia Islam The Twelve Shias as the main branch of Shia Islam give arguments based on the Quran, Hadith religious narration, history, and moral grounds to support their position on Mutta. Firstly, the word of the Quran takes precedence over that of any other scripture, including the An-Nisa, 24, known as the verse of Mutta. A Twelve Shia Hadith attributed to Ali ibn Yaktin notes that Musa al-Kadim, the seventh of the Twelve Imams, when asked about Nikah Mutta, said, why do you ask, when you Ali, with the blessing of Allah, have a wife at your side? He Ali, replied, No, I just want to know. Imam Kadim replied, The permissibility is present within the Book of Allah. Hadiths also record the use of nikah mutta during the time of Abu Bakr, a caliph and Sahabi. 
Later, in 16 R 637 CE, Umar, also a caliph and Sahabi, prohibited Mutta. Shias allege Umar's prohibiting Nikah Mutta was an incident of challenge to Muhammad. Other relevant hadiths include those of Imran ibn Husayn, see Hadith of Mutta and Imran ibn Husayn, and Abdullah ibn Abbas. The opinion of Ibn Abbas is cited in Fati al Qadir. Ibn Abbas said the verse of Mutta. In Tafsir Mu'allam al Tanzil, Ibn Abbas said, The verse of Mutta was an order and it's halal. In Tafsir Kabir, the verse of Mutta appears in the Quran, no verse has come down to abrogate it. In Bukhari, on that, a freed slave of his said to him, that is only when it is very badly needed and qualified permanent women are scarce, or similar cases. On that, Ibn Abbas said, yes. Historically, Twelver Shias see that Nikah Mutta has varied in its spiritual legality, changing from halal to haram and back again over time, and thus cannot be considered in the same light as, for example, taking alcohol, which was never advocated by Muhammad. Other Twelver Shia hadiths are not in favor of mutar marriage because Imam Bachir and Imam Jafar told their companions and their followers to be careful in practicing of mutar in fear of prosecution. Abdullah bin Umair asked Abi Jafar, as, Is it acceptable to you that your women, daughters, Daughters, sisters, daughters of your aunts do it Mutter? Abu Jaffa rebuked him when he mentioned his women and daughters of his aunts. Because due to the question being of the ignorant kind, and that the question was only asked to rise frustration about the matter of Mutter. In another Twelver Shia hadith narrated from Imam Jafar al Sadak narrated by Amar, Abu Abdullah, Imam Jafar Sadak said to me and to Suleiman bin Khalid. I from myself have made Mutta haram onto the both of you, as long as you are in Medina. And this because you come to me all too frequent, and I fear the followers of the other party will capture you and prosecute you because of your friendship to me." Al-Kafi pp 467, v 5, Weasel Shia pp 22, v 21. Zaydi Shia view The Zaydi also reject mutar marriage. In many early Zaydi books like Mumu Imam Ali pp 498 v 112. 2. Hadiths narrated by Ali bin Abi Talib state. Allah's Messenger forbade the temporary marriage in the year of Kibar. Mumu Imam Ali pp 499 v 112. 3. Ali bin Abi Talib said to a man who was engaging in mutar. You are a straying person, the Messenger of Allah has forbidden temporary marriage." Zaydites and Ismailites dismissed all claim made by Athana Asheri, the Twelver Shia about mutar legality and class text that try to justify it as fabrications. Zaydites and Ismailites argue that it is narrated from Imam Jaffa al-Siddiq to Imam Ismail al-Mubarak that these texts are fornication and that it is adultery. Zina bil Raza, Zaydites and Ismailites argue that the traditions banning mutar are classified as muthawatha, highly authentic. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Scholarly views. Muhammad ibn Idris ash Shafi A 9th century Sunni Shafi'i Islamic scholar writes, Nikah Mutta in our eyes is false, whilst Imam Malik deemed it permissible, as proof he says it was halal and permissible, it was removed and was not abrogated. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, a 9th century Sunni Islamic scholar writes, in the same way that Ibn Abbas deemed Mutta to be halal, Imam ibn Hanbal also stated Mutta was halal. Ibn Abbas and other party amongst the Sahaba narrated traditions that Mutta is halal, and Ibn Hanbal also said that it was practicable. Ibn Abbas and other Sahaba said that Mutta can be utilized when needed. Ibn Hanbal also narrated the same. Sayyid Abul Ala Mordudi, a 20th century Sunni Islamic scholar, writes Whether Mutta is haram or halal is a dispute that creates dissension between Shias and Sunnis, and has resulted in heated discussion. It is not difficult to ascertain the truth. A man comes across such situations when nikah becomes impossible and he is forced to make a distinction between zina and mutta. In such scenarios practicing mutta is a better option to zina. Criticism Mutta as adultery 
Sunnis have been said to term it as a lustful act under a religious cover. Topic: <laughs> Mutaras prostitution. Some Sunni and Shia scholars hold the view that this kind of temporary marriage in the present age amounts to prostitution. Following the 2014 release of an 82-page document detailing Iran's rampant prostitution, muta marriage has been suggested by Iranian parliamentarians as a solution to the problem, where couples would be allowed to publicly register their union through the institution of muta marriage. The establishment of chastity houses has also been proposed in the past where prostitutes will be provided in state-sanctioned houses, but the clients would have to perform the nikah muta first. This proposal has not been as of yet ratified by the Iranian authorities. According to Sharla Harry, the Iranian middle class itself considers it to be prostitution which has been given a religious cover by the fundamentalist authorities. Some Western writers have argued that muta approximates prostitution. Julie Parshall writes that muta is legalized prostitution which has been sanctioned by the Twelver Shia authorities. She quotes the Oxford Encyclopedia of Modern Islamic World to differentiate between marriage and muta, and states that while nikah is for procreation, muta is just for sexual gratification. According to Zeno Baran, this kind of temporary marriage provides Shiite men with a religiously sanctioned equivalent to prostitution. According to Eleanor Andreeva's observation published in 2007, Russian travelers to Iran consider muta to be legalized profligacy which is indistinguishable from prostitution. Religious supporters of Muta argue that temporary marriage is different from prostitution for a couple of reasons, including the necessity of Ida in case the couple have sexual intercourse. It means that if a woman marries a man in this way and has sex, she has to wait for a number of months before marrying again and therefore, a woman cannot marry more than three or four times in a year. See also Criticism of Twelver Shia Islam Hadiths related to Muta Nikah Halala Jihad al-Nikah Marriage of Convenience Muta of Hajj Nikah Urfi Nikah Masyah Pilagish Walking Marriage Islamic Marital Jurisprudence <laughs>